Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at measures um, 8, measures 4, measures 29, where we have kind of a basic melody there. Um, what we want to make sure is that our eighth notes are short. And a way that we can play our notes short, but not like staccato short, is if we kind of imagine like we're brushing the string, almost like we're painting on the instrument. So um, something that you can do to put space in between the notes also is roll your stick away from you. So what I mean by that is when we have that melody, anytime, for example, at measure four, um, eight, and 29, sure that we have is a proper bow hold. You want to make sure that your index finger, the first knuckle, is wrapped around the stick so that you can press into the string. That just, that's um, ensuring that you have proper control over your bow. Okay, so back to that, I'll do it a little slower. So it's long, brush, brush, long, brush, brush. So you can do that on an open string. Um, I didn't quite play the notes right there, but you can practice the rhythm at least on an open string or just do some eighth notes. Go ahead and brush the string with me. You're not going to be using your arm as much as you're going to be using your wrist and fingers. Let me just show you. And keep careful watching my arm, and that's not moving. So, brush, brush. And as you can see, my the, the bow is actually turned away from me, and I'm kind of brushing up against it like this. It's going to be this motion. So you can go ahead and practice that if you need to. Let's do that again. That could be a little bit more on the string, but you want to get somewhere in between, like, just barely touching the string and really legato. Okay, so I'm going to do that one more time. have that again at 29 and at 8 as well. Okay, let me go ahead and play it with a metronome. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, now what I'd like to look at is the retakes that we have, and those are notated in our music with the little apostrophes. Um, they're going to be usually in between notes, not on top of them, or on top of a rest. So let's go ahead and look at the different retakes that we have. Um, for example, if you look at measure 13, we have a dotted half note, and then we have that apostrophe, or that breath mark, and then we have a down bow right after that. So we started the measure with a down bow, and then we have to take another down bow to finish up the measure. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate what we're going to do there. You're basically just going to do one big circle with your bow and reset, but it doesn't have to be huge. It's just a really tiny circle. Just make sure you reset your bow so you have enough room. Okay, so playing that, it's going to be... Let me turn on the metronome. One, two, one, two, ready, and... So you can go ahead and practice that a couple times. All you're doing is one, two, three, lift. Notice I made a little circle there. So you're starting from the string on the retake. It's not going to be like we're just coming and landing from the air. So you're going to do play, lift, set. Lift, set. with a metronome. So I'm going to start in measure 11. One, two, lift. Next, what I'd like to look at is the eighth notes that we have in measure 14. Now, I just got done playing through that, but um, one of the things we want to look out for is that we're using the proper amount of bow in the proper section and that we're not rushing. What I mean by rushing is we start at one tempo, like one and two and three and four and, but we start rushing, which means we play it faster and faster. 
We don't want to be doing that. So for that particular section, what I want you to do is I want you to accent every downbeat. So we're going to accent beat one, two, three, four. So it's going to sound something like this. Let me play it with a metronome. Now you don't need to necessarily bob your head every single time, but it does help when you're practicing too. Let me go ahead and play that one more time. Let's do it one more time together. One, two, three. Okay. And I just want to go ahead and explain the way that I'm accenting is, remember when I said that you need to have your first finger in the proper position? That's so that when you put your bow to the string, you can get a proper grip on it. Now, I don't know if you can see, but when I accent the note, I'm actually using my index finger to press into the string so that the stick touches the hair. That's a good indicator that I'm going to emphasize the beginning of the note. So, so it's kind of like a grip. You should be able to tug without, it's almost like it has a little bit of tension, like it's waiting for you to let it go. So press, press, pull, press, pull, press, pull. There you go. And another thing to note too is on your bow hand, if you have a thumb, that kind of looks like a banana, you're not going to be able to play those eighth notes in the lower portion. It's going to be really hard, and your bow is going to kind of be all over the place. Make sure your thumb is bent, okay, so that we can, again, do our extend and flex exercise. The next section I want to go ahead and look at in terms of technique are measures 38 through 55. And what we're really going to be focusing on just right now is how to play a piano pizzicato and then a forte pizzicato, so a soft pizzicato and then a loud pizzicato. So normally, unless otherwise written in the music, when you're doing pizzicato, you almost always have your bow in your hand as you're pizzicatoing. Um, but for right now, for practicing purposes, I'm going to set mine down. You can as well. There are a couple things we need to be mindful of when it comes to um, executing a proper pizzicato. And that is you need to have good posture in your body, meaning you need to be standing upright. You can't be slouching because that's going to affect you know, your sound production. Um, and another thing that you need to do is make sure that your left hand is in the right position. Now, you may or may not need to adjust your shoulder rest, but your violin, the fingerboard, it should be parallel to the ground. And your elbow needs to be under and around, and your left hand needs to be up and over. And I should be able to stick a pencil through here. I should almost have like a little, a little tunnel that I can fit a pencil through right here. That, that means that you have good posture. Another way that you can tell is if you can see the underskin of your forearm, through this little C that we have carved out. That's gonna give you um, a nice full sound. Keep your fingers, your fingers bent. Um, they should, all of them should kind of form, form like an upside down U. For the piano pizzicato, what you wanna make sure you're doing is you're just tapping the string. Then it's just picking it up. You're just tapping, but you still get a clear sound. Now you may or may not wanna tilt it just a little bit but you're not going to wrap around for a forte pizzicato. Okay, you can go ahead and try that on your own. And when you're doing piano, it will still be the same even if you're doing eighth notes. So, there you go. Let's go ahead and try 38 through 55. I'm just going to play through this section. Um, be mindful of your fourth finger A's. A way that you can check to see if you're in tune, in fact, we can just practice it right now, is you're playing third finger G on D. Now extend your fourth finger a whole step to A. If it's in tune, it should sound exactly like open A string. If it's out of tune, if it's slightly flat or sharp, It'll sound something like this. Kind of like the Jaws theme, but we don't want that. So it's out of tune, so I need to move my finger up. I need to adjust it. You can also play your note as a double stop against A string. 
now it's in tune. And you can almost hear it ring too. You'll hear it ring afterwards if it's in tune. It's really important that you use a metronome when you're playing um, because it'll help you realize whether or not you're rushing, meaning you're getting ahead of the beat or if you're getting behind. So let's go ahead and play through this section. I'm going to hold my bow because that's what we're going to do when we're performing it. I'm going to start right on measure 38. One, two, piano, and. Forte. Wrap your finger around. Piano. Fourth finger A. Another reason it's a good idea to have your bow in your hand um, while you're pizzicatoing is so that we're ready for arco or using our bow at measure 54, the fourth beat, when we enter in forte. What I'd like to look at now is measure 57 until the end. In other words, right where the coda starts. Um, what we're going to look at is the rhythm and the rests and the retaking of that bow. But we kind of have a confusing um, rhythm and it alternates. We have all those rests there. So something I'd like to do is make sure I'm able to clap the rhythm and count the rhythm. I'll be starting at measure 57. Um, with my metronome set at 112 beats per minute. Remember, we're clapping before we play, because if we can't clap it, we can't play it. Let's go ahead. One, two, ready, and. Rest, 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 rest. Okay, now let's go ahead and count the rhythm out loud. You'll see what I mean. One, two, ready, and. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, rest, rest, four, and one. Rest, rest, four, and one. Rest, three, rest, one, and two. There you go. Let's do that again. Let's start from measure 59. Let's practice that rhythm. One, two, ready, and. One, rest, rest, four, and one. Rest, rest, four, and one. Rest, three, rest, one, and two. Okay, I think we're ready to play. What I'd like us to do at 59 is to play, rest, set. Play, 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 rest, set. Play, play, play. Just to make sure that we're not only really retaking bow in order to play enough, but um, we're also setting the bow in rhythm so we don't confuse ourselves and we're not scrambling last minute. Because it happens a lot faster than you think it does. So let me go ahead and play it on open D. Let's just practice it on open D for a second. We're going to play from 59 until the end. So we're doing a rhythm just on open D. One, two, ready, and. Rest, set. Rest, set. Play, set. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and add the notes in. One, two, one, two, ready, and. Set. Set. One more time. One, two, one, two, ready, and set. Good. Alrighty, good job, and good luck practicing.